Well, I'm Rick Agnation. We're excited to be here with you today. Uh, Ryan Ivey, your athletics director here. Privilege and honored to have the opportunity to visit with the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Thomas Walkup. And Thomas, thanks for taking some time to visit with us today. You, you missed out one part, the beardless. beardless. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, I look like a different guy than the guy <laughs> in your background there. Uh, yeah. no, it's, it's, uh, I'm super pumped to, uh, to be here and to, uh, to connect with you, to, to connect with the Lumberjack Nation. So I'm excited to dive into this. Good deal. Well, let's talk about the picture that's, that's over my shoulder here. I mean, what exactly were you thinking during this point in time? I think this is you guys playing Notre Dame here in the, in the second round and had a chance there to make it the Sweet 16. Yeah. But just uh, your memories of that run and that game and what that was. What what I was thinking at that time and that moment right there was Sweet 16. That's all. <laughs> um, and it's actually funny for basically right after my sophomore year, you know, we had beat VCU. Um, and then throughout the summer, um, we had all eyes on Sweet 16 for the next two years, basically. That's all. Like when we broke huddles, you know, we'd say right. Sweet 16. And that was all of the uh, – motivation was right there and uh i really thought that the stuff lined up you know kind of perfect for us to do it and even our matchups after you know i think we would have got wisconsin in the next round which would have been a great yeah. matchup for us so uh, uh <laughs> our eyes were you know you know a lot a lot bigger than our stomachs were in there. yeah so yeah. Well, as as you look back on, on that time, and obviously it's kind of taking to taking you to where you are now. Tell us what life is like for you now. Tell us about your journey, you know, overseas and those things, and, and kind of what daily life is for you right now. Yeah, daily life now is different. Um, I think the biggest thing is the time change. You know, being overseas, uh, I'm eight hours ahead, so uh, it's something I've actually grown to love. Is that that morning time. You know, I usually wake up, we'll say around, you know, nine or 10. And then for the first probably four or five hours of my day or just kind of to myself, I can really, you know, I can read, I can enjoy quiet time, have my coffee. Uh, and that's really my favorite part of the day. Of course, I like when, you know, everybody wakes up back home and I get to talk to everybody, catch up, yada, yada, yada. But that morning time is something I've really grown to love. And, um, you know, then I when I would play some video games, chat with people when they're up, using my mom or dad, you know, calls, dad called going into work, talk to my brothers going into work, whatever, my buddies all get up. And then, uh, you know, round six, while I practice, I'll cook dinner and be out. So it's not, yeah. not a ton of stuff going on. Not like it's a crazy, <laughs> exciting day. Right. Um, but, you know, we were talking about this when we went live, you know, just the simplicity, you know, is uh, sometimes, um, you know, some, sometimes underappreciated. It is, no question. So what do you like to read? What are your favorite, what are your favorite books? What, what type of um, I kind of bounce around uh, some uh, motivational books, um, like Relentless by Tim, Tim Grover. Yep. I really, really enjoyed. Um, Love Does um, and Everybody Always are two, two books by Bob Goff. Um, just about being a good person and, uh, you know, loving others. Uh, that's probably two of my favorite books I've ever read. Yeah, um, yeah. And then every once in a while, I try to read some educational stuff. It's Always loses my interest. <laughs> Always loses my interest. I, uh, like, I tried to read some stuff about, you know, diet and, uh, you know, kind of more science behind it. And I was like, ah, you know, it's just, it's just not as captivating. I, I enjoy learning about that stuff. Uh, but whenever it's a little too sciencey for me, yeah, yeah I get it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm the same way. I uh, I like to read leadership books and just motivational type things and things yeah. that get you thinking from a from a you know forty thousand, fifty thousand foot level view and how you can help people bring it into your own daily life and those type of things. So I'm, I'm right there with you for sure. So. Yeah, and right now, I mean, right now, I should I should be reading more than I am, but I mean. We have so much time, you know, I yep. diving into books. I just started The Wolf of Wall Street, actually. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, it's a, one of my favorite movies. And, um, no, it's been an interesting book so far. Yeah. 
Well, I, I, I get into some audible when I run, I'll, I'll listen to books when I run and that way I can maybe kill two birds, with one stone. I wonder how much though I'm comprehending some of that. Cause I'm yeah. breathing harder than I need to be when I'm running and listening to. But, <laughs> yeah. When you get out, start exercising, <laughs> you don't need any other distractions. You just got to work on staying alive. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, take us through your professional journey thus far and kind of when you left SFA and left Nacogdoches, kind of what that looked like and then really where you are now. Um, so right after the season, before graduation or anything, um, I went to Phoenix and started training with a couple guys out there, um, that were more, you know, I guess suited for the pro game. And, mm -hmm. and I would have stayed in Nacogdoches. I would have loved to stay in Nacogdoches, but, yeah. you know, Coach Underwood took the new job. All the coach, you know, assistants were right. working on finding their other jobs. And, um, so I was, I was happy with that. And then I signed in, um, uh, or with the Warriors for Summer League, um, which was a great experience, um, especially with an organization like that, you know, being kind of at the top of the sports world at that time. Um, that was really, really fun to be a part of an organization that had such a buzz around it. You know, right. it's not like we were the ones playing in the NBA, obviously, right. but there was still that buzz about, you know, when the Warriors were playing in Summer League. And, um, like, I think we played the Lakers – and uh, both teams had a huge draw, and you know, for summer league games, man, this is this is pretty big time. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, then went to Chicago uh, for training camp. I think the funnest thing about Chicago was um, being around legends. You know, right. Wayne Wade, Ray John Rondo, Jimmy Butler, um, mm -hmm. seeing how they worked out, seeing how they took care of their bodies. Um, kind of something that you really had to soak up and learn. I mean, Dwayne Wade was at the gym, you know, two hours before practice started getting, you know, his body worked on, and, you know, he's a little later on in his career. He had to really sacrifice his time to be able to, you know, have his body at the you know, top, you know, top shape. And uh, it was really, really neat to see, really neat to learn from those guys. Um, then my year in the D league, um, it was definitely different, definitely <laughs> different. Um, at SFA, we were so focused on the team aspect of things, and it was all about it doesn't matter what's going on. Um, as long as the team is succeeding, everybody is happy. And, um, you know, is that, does everybody want to score 20 points? Of course. But that wasn't the main focus. In the D League, I felt like, it, you know, it was much more self-centered, um, which was a very big, you know, sure. shock, you know, culture shock to me uh, and not something I really enjoyed. Um, and so after that, I uh, played a year in Germany uh, in the Basketball Champions League. Um, really, really good year, really good team. Um, and from that, took a step up to uh, Lithuania, where I played in, I play in EuroLeague now, and uh, which is a, a great league, great, you know, great club. Mm -hmm. um, very, very fortunate to be there. And, um, you know, something that, uh, you know, the next, next thing on my list is a EuroLeague title. And so, uh, just setting goals has been fun throughout my career. Right. Now you guys, I mean, you were what, 22 and two this year um, with your current team. Uh, mm -hmm. You won, I guess when the LK, LKL, LKL is when. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it was a, it was a weird deal. Yeah. <laughs> it was the most unsatisfying championship I've ever won <laughs> in my life. You know? um, so we, we play in three different competitions. We play in a league across Europe. We play in a league, um, just within Lithuania. And then we play in basically a weekend tournament uh, called the Cup. And uh, so we had won the Cup pretty handsomely this year. I think it was ended up being a 15, 20 point game. And I think that kind of helped convince the, you know, the league to crown us champions after gotcha. 24 games, you know. Right. And, you know, they, they came out with a statement saying, you know, Jagers or, you know, have been crowned champions. It was like, eh. <laughs> okay. yeah, I was just kind of, you know, lacked a little bit of, of luster, I guess. Right. Um, but nevertheless, it'll be something that's written on the Wikipedia page. So I guess I'll. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, speaking of those things, I mean, for playing overseas, I mean, what have been some of your most memorable moments uh, since you left SFA? Um, most memorable moments. Uh, my year in Germany, we played in uh, the Final Four in, in Champions League, which was really, really cool. Um, and then this past year in Euro League, we were, I think we were six games out of the playoffs with eight games to play. 
and we've won seven of our last eight and the team that was in eight lost uh, I think seven out of their last eight mm. and it was just kind of a miracle that it happens and uh, snuck into the playoffs and we beat Real Madrid on the road you know in that final game of the regular season and they were I think they were in first place in Euro League at that time and uh, that was a pretty pretty special moment to be part of and um, you know, especially celebrating on another team's court, you know, right. and, yeah. you know and the only roars you hear from, from, uh, you know, the ones of your teammates and coaching staff, yeah. it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Right. So how's the, the culture and the language been, have you had any issues with language barriers and those type of things? Yeah, it's really, I mean, you definitely run into some people that don't speak a lick of English and uh, <laughs> some of my favorite things that happen during those conversations are you know, you, they know what they're trying to communicate. You know what you're trying to communicate. You obviously can't. So you just continue to say it in your own language. <laughs> and it's like, okay, we're not, we're, we're not getting anywhere here. And, uh, you know, they'll say something like, uh, how do I say? And then they'll say a Lithuanian word. And it's like, I got nothing. <laughs> you know, and I'll do the same thing to them. And I'll, I'll you know, say, uh, you know, you have uh, Coca-Cola, whatever, you know. And they're like, can't understand you you know so <laughs> there definitely is some of that but for the most part everybody speaks English you know it's a small country um, so they do a lot of international business mm -hmm. um, you know a lot of imports and exports and um, so they have to be able to speak English to, to communicate and obviously the universal language so um, yeah. I was expecting it to be uh, a little bit more difficult you know before I before I got over there but there's really you know not anywhere that I could go now that's, uh, you know, I can't communicate with anybody. Yeah. Now, are you the, 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 the icon over there as you are here, you know, and you couldn't probably couldn't oh, go. Oh, no, no, no. I couldn't, well, I couldn't see you going to Macklemore's here and be able to have a. <laughs> uh, I really don't, unless I grew out the beard, I don't think anybody in Mac would, would recognize me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, the uh, the club I play, play at is the, is the biggest club in Lithuania, so it's the right. Lithuanians that are really the rock stars, man. Gotcha. We're, we're the sidekicks. <laughs> and, uh, you know, after after games, you know, they it's the Lithuanians. You know, obviously it's Lithuanian reporters, so they want to interview in Lithuanian, right. and uh, so it's our Lithuanian teammates that are that are rock stars, man. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, let's let's go back to your SFA days here a little bit, and, and just talk to us why you chose to come to SFA. Um, I chose to play at SFA because that was, uh, my only option. That was my only one option. Um, lucky for me, uh, they were really good at the time. You know, it wasn't the most, right. you know, that was, at that time, Danny Castro was there. It was not a pretty style of basketball at all. Right. It was ugly. You know, games were in the forties and fifties and, I remember. um, but at that same token, they were winning. And right. as we kind of talked about earlier, that's really all I cared about. You know, growing up, all I wanted to do was play in the NCAA tournament. That was that was it. That was my dream. As far as winning a tournament game, counted out. That was not even on my radar. All I all I was worried about was was getting to play in the NCAA tournament. And a couple years before I signed, I want to say in, in 2007, 2008, they went to the tournament. So it was very realistic for me to be like, if I go here, I have a, I have a chance, you know, and my only other option was HBU who wasn't even, uh, they had just turned D one and weren't even considered a D one program yet. Right. Um, so to, to say that, you know, that was a realistic thing for me to play in the tournament with them was kind of a stretch. And, um, so yeah, it was just kind of, you know, so happened that it happened to be the perfect place for me, perfect fit you know other you know the rest of our recruiting class you know Jacob Parker was a part of our recruiting class and um just kind of was a perfect group of guys that came in um and then obviously the rest is history once you know once Brad gets in there you know we just kind of take off and um I couldn't have asked for a better situation to you know not, not have any other options to have you know it's a perfect you know spot I'm really blessed that that was my only option so as your time as a student athlete, obviously it's, you know, we talk about this a lot with our student athletes now, you've got so much, you know, time and, and, you know, just pressure being a student athlete that you don't have a lot of time 
just being that non-student sometimes. But what what are some of your what was your favorite you know non-sports memory at SFA? Favorite non-sports memories. Um, I really enjoyed the house parties. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I really, I really enjoyed uh, watching other other teams play. I, I enjoyed going to football games, some of the tailgates, uh, especially when we have we would have recruits in. Um, you know, we would we would have a you know catered, and it would be, just be. It was like we were regular students, you know. Right. And uh, uh, soccer games on Friday nights were always a blast. Baseball games were fun. Um, so that stuff was great. Um, but for the most part, even, you know, when we weren't, you know, as a basketball team together, you know, still mostly hanging out with basketball buddies. Right. You know? you yeah, sure. uh, and I, I do have a couple of lifelong friends that, uh, you know, weren't um, – you know, weren't, weren't basketball, you know, guys at SFA. And uh, I remember a few times we would take, you know, it would be a Saturday morning, we would all take our Xboxes and TVs over to uh, my buddy's apartment, you know, shout out 56. And, uh, <laughs> and we would all go over there and uh, we'd have like four TVs and, um, you know, we'd, you know, order in, you know, crap fast food and, you know, right. pig out and live like regular students. And it was, uh, you know, some of my favorite memories for sure. That's great. What about as a student athlete? What's your favorite memory? As a student athlete, um, got to be the championships. There's just yeah. nothing that comes close. Um, we used to, as far as, you know, I guess that's, that's kind of the easy answer, though. Um, something that was difficult at the time, but looking back was a, a lot of fun. Uh, Wednesday afternoons. Uh, you know, because as basketball players, we're always indoors. That's, you know, we're not used to the heat. Football players, they're, they're used to it. <laughs> basketball players are not used to the heat. On Wednesday afternoons, our, our strength coach, Coach Mark, um, would set up a whole circuit outside of, uh, you know, a whole bunch of kind of like hard labor stuff, like sledgehammer, all that, you know. Um, and during that time, I dreaded it. I hated it. Um, but looking back on it, that's some of my favorite, you know, workouts, favorite memories of all of us really coming together and being like, Hey, this right now, this guy's the devil, you know, but we got to come together and, you know, and, and, you know, defeat this guy basically. <laughs> and, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was hard at the time and it was hot as hell, but you know, looking back on it, it was a lot of fun to come together like that. Right. That's awesome. Well, that's a lot of it too, right? I mean, being a student athlete, it's what it's about. It's about coming together as a group. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. Especially, you know, in a team sport like that, you know, you depend yeah. so much on each other. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm really happy uh, about the, uh, you know, lifelong friendships that I'll, that I'll have, you know, from, from the guys from that team. That's awesome. That's good. So what advice would you give uh, our student athletes today, the current SFA student athletes, but I mean, probably any student athlete in general right now. Um, I was always a big do your work early guy. Um, as far as in the classroom, getting ahead on the semester, I think was always a huge, huge thing. Um, you know, if you, if you miss the first test, you're really putting yourself in a hole, you know, you on the first test, whatever. If you make, you know, A and a B on the first test, then you go in there and bomb the third one. It's like, it's not ideal, but, you know, at least you gave yourself some lead way. Um, so that would be my, my, you know, best advice I could give as far as in the classroom. Um, and then on, you know, on the court, on the field, whatever, you know, outwork everybody. Fall in love with it. Um, I think during my time at SFA, I fell in love with, like the process of it, as people Mm -hmm. say, with, you know, showing up to practice early, you know, working out or working out on off days or coming back at night. I just, I grew, it it really wasn't like, man, here we go again. Like, I know I need to go shoot, but I don't really want to. It was all, it was kind of turned into, I was, I was itching to, to go do it. And I I really wanted to, and that was, uh, you know, partly the, the culture that we had built there and, um, you know, also the coaching staff, you know, coach Gentry and I, you know, really, um, shared that kind of, you know, itching, you know, itching to get into the gym and get better and learn new stuff. And, um, you know, so I, I, I encourage to, you know, people to try and fall in love with the process of it. 
And I think that's the biggest thing, you know, we always talk about with our student athletes is just, again, understanding that you've got to enjoy what you're doing, right? Absolutely. All in love with what you're doing. You've got to, you've got to work at it and it, it take, it's work, you know, it's not yeah. something that's just going to come easy for everyone. And Sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think it's pretty evident that teams that work hard, um, you know, the successful ones, I don't think that's any secret. It's just a matter of doing it and enjoying it. Um, it definitely became to a, a point where you know if you really do fall in love with it and you'll know if you do right but where it's not work it really is just fun right. you enjoy it and okay it's not you know you're, you're gonna have to suffer some whatever it's not gonna be fun running sprints you know right. uh but you know overall you're enjoying the process of it and you right. see strides and you see gains and uh you know then they start building on top of each other and so you you know get to be the athlete you want to be or you know, get to where you want to go, use your sport for whatever you want to use it for. Um, you know, it's a, no, it's a process. Yeah, no question. So I'm going to take you back to the West Virginia game and that mm -hmm. iconic photo that was there. And I was going to, yeah. I used that one as my Zoom background, but it looked like you were like licking my ear. Licking your face? Yeah, 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 probably not. I was like, idea. probably not a good idea right now. But <laughs> just talk us through that iconic photo and that moment and, how you how 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 that all came about? Um, I will start back. So uh, selection Sunday, my sophomore year, we thought we could possibly draw West Virginia, and whenever you know another team was selected, you know to play them, I looked at our coaching staff. Our coach staff was like, we really, you know got out of a jam there that could have been close you know that would not be a you know preferred matchup for us right. so they basically had the same team same you know concept same defense all that stuff and you know coach Underwood had worked under you know hugs and so that was not that, the matchup we wanted senior year comes along we get that matchup and it's like still not the matchup we want you know <laughs> uh that still isn't you know it's it's there's teams that, you know, we had kind of picked out like, hey, these would be the perfect matchups for us. And then on the complete other side was like, there's West Virginia, not a great matchup. <laughs> so we get that matchup. And I guess it was just, you know, the, the pressure of how they played, um, their size. Um, they were, you know, an intimidating team. And I think the picture of me with the tongue out is just kind of like that – whole release of just like kind of letting all of that you know pressure and intimidation um completely just letting it completely go and you know when I hit that shot on what it put us up 14 15 17 whatever and that really it was like we did it you know that yeah. was that was the moment in which I felt like you know whatever coach, coach could have taken us all out of the game and it was right. like the game was over you yeah. know and how we did it um, it was just a let go of emotion. Yeah, that's awesome, man. It's it's one that it will live for a long, long time. So yeah. I think, yeah. you know, obviously with the beard and everything as well, it's just that yeah. kind of photo that's going to live around SFA for a, for a long, long time. Yeah, I think I think uh, one of my favorite parts about that memory was where I was looking was was our section. You know, the right. whole you know uh Barclays Arena and then there's a small section of purple right there <laughs> and uh it was just special you know for you know throughout the entire game for people that never entered a or gone to an NCAA tournament game there's there's you know one, you're one little section of fans and you just hear a roar from them you know right. all night and uh so being able to look and you know I, my entire you know family was there I had a lot of friends there so that was kind of you know looking at them just being like you know we did it right that's awesome. Well, final question I have for you. Just tell us what being a lumberjack means to you. Oof. Uh, being a lumberjack means a lot. Um, I think it, one of the coolest things to me about being a lumberjack is it's a, it's not just, you know, for me, it's not just the basketball program. Um, it's not just the school. Um, I mean, it's the city of Nacogdoches. Um, it's bigger than just kind of one thing, one specified thing. And, uh, you know, of course, there's a lot of people that, you know, say that, you know, going to a bigger school is, has the best, you know, experience, blah, blah, blah. But 
um, that connection that I have to, you know, like I said, the, the basketball program, the, the school and the city all together, make it something that's really, really special. Um, something that's, you know, pretty deep in my heart, you know, deep in, you know, who I am as a person. Um, I often think about if I didn't go to SFA, would I even be playing professional basketball? Right. Um, you know, and, there's just absolutely no part of me that doubts that this was the right decision and, and um, the people, how well the people treated me is something that's very special. Um, lifelong friends, you know, all that stuff. Um, you know, being an alumni really, you know, holds a special place in my heart. That's awesome, man. That's, and that's what it's about. You know, that's what we talk to our student athletes about right now that uh, you're going to look back on this time and it's going to help you become who you are today. Right. And the opportunity for you to go off and, and become great people and great productive people of society and whether that's, you know, better husbands, better fathers, you know, whatever it may be, whatever it is that, that, that they're certainly going to do. But it's, uh, it's certainly yeah. a big part of who we are. That's for sure. Absolutely. You know, it's uh, on the court stuff, off the court stuff, the connections, the people. Um, it's, it's a special place, very special place. Well, man, we appreciate your time. Appreciate you taking the time to be with us. And as I told you before, you're always welcome back. We'd love to see you when, when the pandemic uh, loosens up on us a little bit and we're able to get back to normal a little bit. We'd love to be able to see you. And, uh, you're always welcome. And certainly when we get our basketball performance center done, we'd love to have you come yeah. back and I'll shoot a few that. hoops in it and see what it's like. So yeah, Absolutely. Favorite place on earth, man. Favorite place on earth. Good deal. Appreciate it so much. Have a great one. Absolutely. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, you bet.